delighted to say we have uh, Ocean Parks trainer Gary Hennessy with us this morning. Um, Gary, there's a degree of expectation um, with your horse coming here. Um, so first up, how you have the horse settling in and uh, adjusting to life in, in Dubai? Well, look, you know, it's, um, it's been a huge flight over uh, the horse flew out of um, New Zealand on Sunday, early Sunday morning. And he went to um, Australia and got him there and, and spent two days there and flew out on Monday night. He arrived here last Tuesday and um, he looked a little tucked up but overall I was quite pleased. He went straight into the feed bucket, straight into the water and each day he's um, just progressed along really nicely and um, you know, he looked really, really bright. And obviously there's a degree of expectation with your horse and, and what so far that he, he's, he's achieved and how are you assessing Horses prospects for this weekend? Oh, look, we had a huge run in the spring. Um, of course, won the group one over 1400 metres fresh up, and um, the um, whole idea of the spring was setting the horse for the Cox Plate. And um, he arrived in Australia and uh, he won the Underwood um, fresh up over 1800 metres, and he beat um, 10 group one horses that day, and um, then won with some authority at the finish. And uh, not a thing went wrong in that preparation. And then went on and won the um, <coughs> Caulfield Stakes, and then went on and won the um, Cox Plate. And um, doing so, um, you know, form around that race so it was huge. They rated as one of the four best um, Cox Plate us in the last 20 years. And to, um, to win four group ones, including the Cox Plate, um, he set a record on himself. And with this horse, what? Degree of interest has the horse now created back home in New Zealand? Give a sense of the what what people are saying about it, and the sort of uh, catching up with a sort of almost like a black caviar type fever. Is there anything like that going on back in New Zealand? Oh look, um, you know the Cox Plate is probably um, you know, um, a race that uh, New Zealand has had a lot of success in the past, and it's a race that um, my cousin David Sullivan's set out to to, to win, and um, you know, he did so. Um, with um, Surface Paradise and you know the Bone Crusher, Waverly, our Waverly Star Clash was huge, and and, um, and and to do that, I mean everybody back home, you know, was just well, I didn't, you didn't realise, you know, how much enjoyment and an excitement everybody got out of the winning the Cox Plate till we actually got home. So um, yeah, no, he's got a huge following at home, and um, you know, uh, everybody's been really great in getting on board and supporting us. All that, with that expectation, comes pressure. So, talk how you're trying to sort of deal with that sort of level of interest in the horse. Oh, I'm pretty laid back. Um, you know, I like working close with my horse, and um, you know, when I'm around the horse, um, I feel quite quite relaxed about things. And um, uh, I guess um, being exposed um, to um, the media and everything in Australia in the spring, yeah, it's um, you know, it hasn't been um, too bad at all. Uh, how good do you think this horse is, or what you know about that and what the horse has achieved? Do you think really special? Oh, look, I think his, um, his greatest achievement was the day he got beaten at Auckland in the, um, in the Guineas that day, what he did and showed. And um, you know, David Sullivan came up to me and that's a good run, Gary, and I said, he's a freak. And um, you know, he's gone on and, 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 and done some amazing things since then. And is there a sense now that sort of coming out from, or moving out from Australia and New Zealand, there's now a, to prove the horse is worth, that he is a freak, as you say? Oh, look, you know, um, he, he's such a lovely natured horse, and, you know, as Glenn Boss said in the spring, you know, um, everybody were picking horses to beat him, but he said, you know, this horse just comes out and he wins, you know, he's a winner, he just loves winning, and um, he's got that lovely will to win, and... Um, you know, he's not one-dimensional at all. His um, jockeys have gone on and got off him, like Lee Thomas the other day, and just said, you know, first time he had a leg over the horse, and he said, just push button, you know. But his acceleration when you ask him is just unbelievable. And Johnny Mercer's got the ride, so the thinking behind that? Oh, look, you know, um, we're, we're planning to go to, to England and um, run at Royal Ascot and uh, maybe France and, and definitely Ireland at the end of the campaign um, to get somebody like Johnny Murder, um who's you know, had a leg over some of the most famous horses we've seen grace the turf in, in the UK. Now he's not um, uh, connected with um, the Aga Khan or, or, or Coolmore. Uh, he's freelancing, so we've got you know um, someone like Sir Johnny that we can draw on because we're going into the unknown for us, um, taking a horse into Europe. 
so we can draw on his experience. Obviously, this is such a competitive race. What, $3 million first prize, which is more than the horse has accumulated in, in the career so far. Comes the added pressure. So you, you're saying, do you, what do you expect? Do you, I mean, if you're saying he's a freak, I get the sense that you, you'd be disappointed if you don't win. Oh, not at all. I mean, um, <clears throat> you know, I've, I've got um, Johnny on board and um, you know, I feel that's his job to work out um, where the horse can be placed and, and, and the other runners, he'll know more about them than what I do. And um, you know, my job is getting the horse um, to the line fit and healthy and, um, and um, I leave it up to the riders. You've only got a small team back in New Zealand. What does it mean to you to sort of get a horse like this as a, as a trainer? Oh look, you know, Jenny and I have um, worked just as a husband and wife and um, just concentrated on doing 10, 12, 15 horses all the way along. Uh, we enjoy you know, working with the horses and um, ourselves and being hands on. So you know, that's a choice um, we've, we've chosen rather than training a big team of horses. Um, we stand a stallion as well now. He's a horse that was retired out of Hong Kong, a track record holder. and So he's another sort of bit of a hobby. and. A, another string to our bow. Um, you know, we've got um, yearlings at the moment being broken in by him, so that's the next challenge, and uh, we've done uh, pretty well a lot of things. But to have a horse like this, I mean, this is, is this sort of, it's career defining in many ways. Oh, definitely, I mean, it's, uh, it's the ultimate. I mean, I remember seeing um, Bel Marino going around when, he, when I was a kid, you know, and um, coming over to um, England and running on the Pre de l'Art, and so, um, you know, to um, actually be following on and what he, did is um, just, yeah, it's, well, it's pretty well fairy tale stuff. Do you have a set of tails? Because that's what you're going to have to wear if you get a Royal Ascot. <laughs> well, a couple of the boys back home think I should be using Peter Moody's head, hat because they think my head might fit it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, questions for, for Gary. Gary, can you just sort of explain what you mean by the Royal Ascot? Because it's not something that I've explained to you before. Well, um, <clears throat> I had. I actually had a horse come back from Hong Kong who was a bleeder and um, I started him at a Taupo Trials and in that heat was um, Saeeda, Ocean Park's um, dam and um, this horse we had um, called One OK um, beat Saeeda in that trial that day but um, Roger James, um, Saeeda's trainer, had two guys leading this filly around and by Zabil you just knew she was something special, she was a lovely attractive mare. So I followed her from then and she won the next two starts and um, she went out to be favourite for the Avondale Guineas which is our major lead up into the derby and she was the favourite and um, she fractured a leg. So um, when I go around and looking at yearlings um, one month or so before the sales, uh, when I seen this um, colt being paraded, uh, it just stuck in my mind. Um, gee, he looks so much like his dam. And, um, I remembered um, you know, how highly rated she was and I just put him down as a must buy. I just fell in love with him then. Do you feel like do you think come up to him and he's won perhaps one of the green buttons, but he still there's a feeling that he never he's sort of underachieved, as it were, compared to his form in Australia. Do you fearful that, that might happen? Well, I think I think if um, you know if Bart Cummings had gone up and trained, uh, so you think in the Northern Hemisphere, we might have seen a different result. Why do you think that? Well, I think Bart would have pulled his hair out and seen what um, Cornwall were doing with him. Gary, historically, the duty free is one of the toughest races of the card. Uh, have you had a look at the card and? What do you think the threats could be to this? There are half a dozen horses with the chances of the race. I just say, I mean, um, yeah, it, to, to any field um, running for $5 million, I mean, um, a field full of 10 Group 1 winners, uh, um, you know, with the greatest respect for the horses and the trainers. And um, that's why I've, I've got someone like Johnny Murder on my horse, and I'll draw on his um, knowledge of the horses that he'll be um, racing against. Maybe an acid test as to how Ocean Park may vary in terms 
Oh, look, um, you know, for us travelling to Australia, it's only like a three hour um, hop on the plane, so you know, you can get in there two days beforehand and not lose much at all. Um, coming here to Dubai, you know, it's a huge, huge journey for any horse, and I think, you know, it's a huge advantage to the um, local horses here racing. The same as what we've seen in Hong Kong. Hong Kong now have got some really quality horses racing there and for the internationals to go over there and win, it's got harder and harder each year and that I feel that comes down to the travelling.